William Minerva. <laughs> Welcome everyone to review the channel. The review. I, my my name is uh, Lobster Magnet. I'm here with my good old good old buddy Goro Gregoro and my other buddy uh, Zevul, who is here to discuss uh, the recently just dropped chapter of Promise Neverland, chapter forty one. Yeah, we're we're getting on this hype train. We are getting on this hype train so much that this chapter is served piping hot from the scan laters, and it has been consumed by us, and we are here to discuss it. Yes. So, what, what, what do you guys think of this chapter? Now that we've, okay. uh, you know. I, all right, I, I just I just have to say first, fuck that scarf <laughs> and those goggles. I hate that character design. It, it's only <laughs> for like one panel. I, like I understand that. I understand. I understand. It's only for one panel. I don't care. I hate it. It's like this terrible fucking pilot version of Naruto goggles. Terrible. It looks terrible. But did you it notice is, they had a separate drawing? I would ever expect out of a bad fucking young adult. They novel, had a separate drawing for Min- They had a separate drawing for William Minerva this time to show yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, and I'm 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 happy about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm hoping they continue with that because Jesus Christ, I will slap the shit out of someone if anyone even resembling that thing pops up at any point, or if the kids start dressing like that. I don't care if they have powers. I just want them to get eaten at that point. <laughs> so, so you would hate if there was like some sort of badass point where like the demons destroy like the last human city, and then Emma comes in and like she's wearing the William Minerva scarf <laughs> and the goggles, and she's standing tall <laughs> after her incredible sci-fi training, and she's going to you know bring vengeance upon for the lost city. Yeah, and fuck that. that. And then no, uh, f- no. grown up Phil, like, will see Emma like that. And he'll be like, Where did you get those goggles and scarf? And she's like, William Minerva's books. Which is. <sighs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. God, can you imagine that if William Minerva just, like, turns out to be, like, the sage mentor character who, like, you know, every living being has a special energy called blank, blank. And you must harness your blank blank to become the defenders of mankind. Scarf goggles? Yeah, <laughs> yeah scarf goggles. <laughs> you Everyone must harness your scarf goggles. goggles. <laughs> but tangent aside, though, you know, the William Minerva hype train, as I call it, uh, definitely, you know, continue to get a boost as this, like, you know, we, we, originally it was kind of like, it felt like the pen was a little underwhelming, but now we're learning that this pen is like a fucking holographic omni tool. <laughs> That that yeah. could just like do everything, and I'm kind of loving it that there's like this code hidden in the books, and they determine like which book has the code to break into the pen to its like more advanced processing substations. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm I'm willing to admit, teased. pretty cool. I, I'm I'm getting on the fucking brain for that at least, because uh, Jesus uh, Christ, I, I'm so happy that this is still just one long puzzle game. Now, and it's just like the kids like sitting around doing their deductive reasoning. And can I say those little scarves are so cute? Oh, they're like, oh, they're in the little chili forest. <laughs> and they're like, we need to bundle up. And then they have the little cute scene with the sea anemones. And like, you know, this tells us that we can get water. And it's like, oh, you're being little smart kids and you're surviving. Oh, this is wonderful. But <laughs> all yeah, of that. And then monsters. Uh, yeah. Then the fucking, then the fucking monster. big badass oh. monster comes and is like about to eat them. That's yeah. all I really wanted. This entire <laughs> chapter, as soon as, I, as soon as it was called Monster and Bush, like I don't care. Fuck your sea and enemies. Fuck that dude with the scarf and the goggles. <laughs> yes, yes, the pen is wonderful. Can you please just eat a small child already? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really interesting because, like, this is like the first like supernatural. Well, I guess you could say the tree is like the first first supernatural thing that they've had to fight or fantasy thing that they've had to fight. But now it's like this is a badass thing that looks extremely hostile and looks like it's ready to fuck some shit up. It, it looks like it's gonna like munch on the kids and they are completely unprepared. You know, I, I can't imagine. I really can't wait to see the next chapter because like. We haven't really seen them like directly deal with the demons or, or anything on par with that, like directly. Yeah, and and that's when Norman's going to show back up with his Bankai spirit bomb <laughs> rats again. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I it's like, it. come with me if you want to learn the ways of chakra, <laughs> Nen. <laughs> <laughs> if there ever is a point where that's going to happen, like, this is probably the closest to it. I, I, but, like, everything implies that we'll see something clever and smart, and they'll use some sort of deductive reasoning to determine that, like, although what's really interesting about it is that it kind of resembles the demons, but it doesn't have, like, their signature little two-eye face mask doohickey. Yeah. So this like could be a William Minerva monster. No, I, I, think I mean, maybe they're like, you know what I mean? Like from the books, the William Minerva books. Yeah. Well, we yeah. didn't get any foreshadowing of other monsters yet, except for those sea and enemy water cacti things. Yeah. Um, so my, I don't know. I feel like it's credits to my theory that like, you know, quite possibly, um, you know, all these like monster beings are fighting to eat the kids to get intelligence. And maybe this is like, another feral version of like that's not the demon monsters but something similar from like a different faction yeah I, what, what i'm kind of hoping for here is something reasonably intelligent on the kids part like maybe i don't know the most obvious choice seems to be luring the thing um and then basically playing um bullfighter with it and dodging out of the way and dumping it back into the hole with the plants yeah, that that, that 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 that's the most reasonable thing that feels like you know, considering the setup, that would be uh, the most earned and like you know, <laughs> wouldn't Norman coming in? <laughs> God, I, I almost want to pay the cat to like make this drawing of like the Norman coming back to life as like the most <laughs> character ever, where he has a sword, spiky <laughs> hair, um, like maybe I'm trying to think how much other shit can you like throw on him. You have to oh you have God. to have him pronouncing like bankai, you know bankai well, and uh, yes, holding like, a The sword is the bankai, isn't it? God, is I'm that? so happy I never watched Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he to have him come in like make him like Mister Anime would be like I'm trying to think. He'd have to have spiky hair. He'd have to have like a sword. He'd have to have either some sort of gi or robe kind of costume. And maybe some si- sort of sci-fi doodad like like okay, you know, either gi or robe. Or, or Akatsuki cloak. I, I was gonna say some sort of like ridiculous Final Fantasy inspired get up with too many zippers. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, like like a tactical vest with like way too many zippers and like some like leather on it. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of see that. Like, God. uh... You never really got far in like uh, Kill a Kill, right, Scott? Oh, I finished it. Um, oh, you finished it. All right, so it a while like, ago, yeah. Oh, I always thought you were like a few episodes, but never finished it. Um, you remember Nudist hey, Beach? Yeah, you, you, you remember? Uh, you remember Nudist Beach? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something like that with more zippers. <laughs> <laughs> so, like that with clothes. Yeah, yeah, with a little bit more clothes, um, a, little, yeah, a little bit more clothes, tactical things, bondage leather, lots of zippers, um, some sort of like really cool laser sword, and, and oh, like wait, 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 he needs to have lost some kind of body part and had it replaced with cybernetics. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he needs all that, and then you know, there you go. That's like Shonen Jump gold, according to like you know the, the most cynical, lazy standards <laughs> of Shonen storytelling. So basically, by our expectations. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, like, how different would this series be if like it suddenly changed editors, and then the editors were actually saying shit like that to the artists, and it was like. Oh my God! You should totally make a uh, uh, Norman come back with a Razigan and the sword and shit like we that. Need, we need a power system. We need a cool power. Well, Scott, have I ever told you the, the famous story of Toriyama's editor? Mm-mm. Um, I've told this to Greg, and I'll say it again. It's a really fun story. Um, so basically, like Toriyama, either his current or his former editor, like when he was doing like the uh, the Cell Android Saga. Um, He was, like, going from chapter to chapter. He didn't really have much of a game plan. And, and, like, literally his editor kept on calling him saying, like, what what the fuck? Um, An old old guy and a fat ass? That's the two big villains after all the weight? 
you change it. And then he introduced like the you know the, the Android eighteen and seventeen. And then he calls, "What the fuck? They're just two little kids, two little brats. This is the final villain. Change it." <laughs> so then he introduces, you know, the evil, you know, creepy child molestation version of Cell, and he says, "Like it's getting there, but like redesign him, make, make, make him into something worthy." <laughs> it was, it's pretty funny. That's literally how you know the, the, the most high famous uh, storyline of Dragon Ball Z was forged by <laughs> oh, one guy yeah, saying, man. "Your villain sucks. Make another one." <laughs> Come on, fuck you. The goddamn Red Ribbon Army was a fox and a goddamn child and some, like, random woman, okay? you he, He's earned the right to do whatever the fuck he wants. So if he wants to make it an old guy and some weird-looking thing that looks like an armored Pillsbury, the goddamn doughboy, <laughs> he can do whatever he wants, okay? <laughs> Well, we'll never know. I'm sure there's some alternate universe where, like, maybe we got to see Akira Toriyama, like, you know, um, what he really, really wanted to do. And, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy was actually in some weird way, though, if you think about it, he did kind of, like, get to reintroduce that, like, body type and that, like, Majin Buu, basically. Yeah. It is kind of like the Pillsbury Doughboy robot in terms of design. <laughs> oh, man, I kind of wonder if, like, Majin Buu's final form is a result of that same editor. It's going, what, 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 what the hell is this? I, I thought I told you no old people or no weird dough monsters. And what is the, it's bubblegum. Change it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it. Like, I would, oh, I want to be like a, a fly on the wall of like the editorial department of like the Shonen Jump so fucking badly. I, like, it'd be interesting to see like what the, because I know they like switch them out every like year or something. They like always like, you know, no, you don't usually have like a editor who sticks with you throughout the entire series run, or at least it's rare from what I've read. Um, so it would be interesting. There's like one guy who's like, you know, kind of like just wants to derail the Promise Neverland train with like <laughs> terrible ideas. Like, you know, all right. The kids are cute, but they're not Moe enough. You know, Emma's never gonna like take off unless you make her Moe. Let's let's do this. Let's let's make this happen. Yeah, I, I, I I've always had like questions like that, kind of like well, the One Piece art style changes. Like, I, I if I if I could ask one question of Oda, it would always be, so who 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 gave you a bunch of money, or or who just sat on you and pressured you until you like gave literally everyone boobs the size of their head. <laughs> And like <laughs> cut their waist size, and also made all of their eyes the same. Because god damn it, Nico Robin used to have like this hawk faced goddamn nose. Doesn't and, she and still did... have like an off face? Yeah, not really, not as much. I mean, go go look at the really old drawings of her, and then go hmm. go look at the pictures now, and she's like a drastically different character design. I'll have to go really look at weird. it because like. I, don't know, I always thought Nico Robin, out of all of those straw hats, like got the least amount of redesign and kind of remained Ew. most consistent. <laughs> I mean, at least Frankie, Frankie's design was like fun and entertaining. He's probably the one who got the got the got the best out of it. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan. I, I was never a huge fan. Like, I, I feel like he's just like this kind of. I don't know. Weak. I like Chopper's redesign. That's a no. cool. That's a cool little Fuck hat. You. Fuck you! I, I hate his redesign. <laughs> I like it back when he was like a scraggly little animal. <laughs> yeah, that was that was better. And also, I mean, seriously, but come on, Frankie, just like you you don't like the nose pressing hair design change? That's awesome. It, it freaks me out, man. It <laughs> freaks me out. Like he's this like weird, you know, transhuman, transgender who just like goes with everything. And it was like, God damn it, man! I liked you better when you were like a like a little little kind of like a mob boss with science. <laughs> no, no, no. It's better this way. That's fucking awesome. I fucking love the fact that he has, like, a hair cannon and shit. <laughs> or, or, like, dreads or braids or whatever the fuck he feels like. Because he's a goddamn robot. And apparently the easiest upgrade that he had to do on himself was, like, making adjustments to his hair so he could be, like, a goddamn Barbie doll. And just grow <laughs> shit out however the fuck he wants. That's awesome. I would do that if I could. If I could. <laughs> Yeah. Like, if I could have, like, a pineapple for hair one day and then just decide I'm bored <laughs> of it and go back to my normal hair, well, why the fuck not? <laughs> good, good, good argument. Maybe it's just his shoulders that, like, freak me the fuck out. They're just, like, so fucking big. 
They're, they're just like, these ginormous orbs that he has, and it's like, he, he, you know, he's a the, fucking cyborg. What is your problem? I thought you liked cyborg. Yeah, I, I like I liked the Frankie who was like human sized and like, you, you know, who felt like he he made sense with the straw hats like palling around versus like, I don't know, this like assault against nature and man and like who just like takes up half the screen when he's around. What is your problem? He, Normally you like that's, weird shit like that. That like, is I what he is. You to be the most ecstatic <laughs> about that. That I mean I, I I really like Frankie's redesign in one piece, but uh how I am I know. even having this argument with you? I, I would expect to be taking your side of the argument. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, it, it's kind of weird. It's, it, it feels like something yeah, that you would hate and I would like say is awesome. Like, oh my god, he's got little hands that like go inside of his bigger hands. <laughs> I fucking love that. <laughs> fuck you. It's awesome. <laughs> It's like okay, opposite. It's, it's like so opposite ridiculous. day. You guys should have been arguing the different He had little tiny hands, and everything made sense. It's impractical. It's How like, oh my god, I made myself impractical that I have to have little tiny hands to come out of my big hands to actually it's all do the shit. fucking work around. It's not impractical when you can still do stuff when you have little tiny hands that Why come out of your normal so hands. Why are you just like so big and so can you punch <laughs> things better? It's true. He can punch things better. It is true. I don't know. He, just, he, he, he just like scares me. There was like something huggable about the like, you know, the old Frankie and the new Frankie just isn't quite that huggable. And he just like, how is this freaking takes you up out? So much space on the ship. <laughs> he does well, take like, up a lot he's of space. more huggable. Okay, he's dropped like the weird like pervert thing and just fully embraced the fact that he's just fucking weird as shit. <laughs> I'd be more willing to hug the new Frankie. Especially because I get to boop his nose and also change his hairstyle. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really <laughs> bored with that. Uh, I'm kind of amazed that, like, there isn't, like, merchandise for that. Some some sort of super toy that, like, changes hairstyles. It, the, holy crap, did we get off track. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Really the, the point is, though, that like so oh. far, Promised Neverland. You guys should just like stare at a page of like Promised Neverland just to make sure <laughs> that you guys don't. You guys don't. Maybe, uh, should we just change the format to go page by page next time? If we don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll experiment. We'll 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 experiment. This you know, is still maybe, maybe maybe the commenters should let us know if they enjoy our getting this fucking off topic. <laughs> But yeah. this was definitely a very good chapter. As far as I can tell, there hasn't been, like, any major editorial interference. It's just what made us go on that huge, freaking crazy tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And anyway. Anyway. So I am still really curious to see if William Minerva is going to be the good guy. I mean, so far, it, it's kind of been, like, even though it's a really nice refreshing change of pace for the story and the way everything is panning out. I'm still not sure if we're, we're ever going to get that. Oh no, everything was a double cross kind of thing going that. that well, deeper. I, I really like that theory where, you know, Min William Minerva was like actually a competing like farm that wanted to like lure the kids to uh, another farm. So they would get the better produce. Exactly. That, that would be, be that'd be still really sick. If that that kind of had like we kind of had something like that with um, Ray, and I was really curious. It's like, oh man, maybe he's gonna be. He maybe he's gonna be evil or a triple agent. Yeah, or or some of the other kids, but we, that never quite panned out. It always just kind of dumped back to that really black and white. Okay, these are the good guys. Over here are the bad guys. You yeah, know the score. Like, I mean, it's, it would be an awesome storytelling development, but I, I just feel like, you know, in some ways, you know, over, like, a course of time, you get a sense of, like, what the series wants to be, what its tone is, what feels like a good tone for the series. Um, and it t feels like, to me, like, it would be such a betrayal of the sort of sense of spirit and, of adventure and optimism to, like, have William Minerva turn out to be evil. Mm. Yeah, I know. I just kind of want a William Minerva Red Wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm so invested in seeing some of these kids die, but I really kind of want to see some of these kids die. 
I, they <laughs> are so like many fucking children. They are so and I, innocent I, like, and adorable. It just, I don't like... really care about half of them. I just, <laughs> wanna, like, I just want some kind of character arc where like Ray and yeah, just like has to like come to terms with the fact that like even though Norman sacrificed himself and you're trying to save everyone, that small child just got mauled to death <laughs> by a giant monster that came out of the woods at the end of this chapter. <laughs> In some ways, I can sort of see that, although it still feels like. I mm. I wonder if they're they're not entirely okay with like showing violent child death. They're okay with like implied child death. Still, it seems. Well, that's one yeah. of the like, biggest enigmas. I wonder about like the Shonen Jump editorial. Like, w- <laughs> what are the limits of like violence and sex? Because like, you know, someday I'm going to do a video on this because, like, I, I think one of the reasons why, like, shonen manga, you know, so pervasive, so popular, and why it acts as, like, such a bridge of, like, people who kind of, like, grow up and it's like, you know, oh, I love animation, but I don't want to uh, give it up, you know, even though, like, the world is telling me, you know, I can't watch cartoons anymore. You know, Shonen Jump is like, oh, my God, here are these all super involved, you know, um, cartoons that have ongoing storylines. They have, uh, you know, slightly richer characterization than, the, like, you know, mostly self-contained uh, stuff you get in, from uh, American cartoons. And, you know, they, they also feel a little bit more dangerous because, you know, there's violence, there's consequences. You know, these kids don't necessarily have, like, a safety net. Bad shit can happen to them, uh, which makes them, you know, feel like they, they have, like, sl- slightly more edgy and dangerous than, I don't know, like, G.I. Joe. Yeah, or, I am curious to know yeah. what the the line between shonen and senin is. Yeah, because it, it, it's really interesting. Because like, I don't know, there's some pretty violent fucking shit. Uh, you know, I've seen in shonen manga, but like, you know, there, there's always like, it doesn't get too graphic, but you know, every now and then, you know, I see something in Hunter Hunter, and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, someone <laughs> like, like decapitations. Like, completely- <laughs> Yeah, decapitated or twisted into this horrible aberration of like a human twist, uh, you know, pretzel. And I'm wondering, like, what is too far and what is not far enough? And the sexuality thing, like, confuses the fuck out of me. It's like, oh, you can have panty shots. Oh my God, look at the girl in the shower. But, you know, they can't have them kiss until the end of the series or you can't have them make out or, or whatever. Or. They can't have sex. They can have like innuendo up the wazoo, but you can't have like. They can't have sex either. I don't think. Free form CW level of sex. Yeah, I I I don't know. So yeah, I I would kind of be interested in knowing like exactly what the editorial staff is going like. Okay, okay. So you can cut that kid's ear off. Yeah. Because that that's for the good of the story. But no, I really don't want you having a giant tree monster eat one of the little kids. <laughs> um, if you could just cut that out, that'd be great. M- may- maybe introduce somebody who saves them. Yeah, yeah, he has a scarf and some goggles or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, like, well, it's interesting. Like, if you're going to have William Minerva have, like, a really badass thing where it's like, oh, my God, they're, you know, trapped by this horrible monster thing and they are completely fucked. Although it's interesting, though, because it's not it, – that's why I think it's not the demons because, like, we saw the, like, hunt hellhound things. And, you know, obviously it's a completely different design. More muscular. Doesn't have, like, the signature triangle headpiece thing. And, you know, this I is the point I think this is a monster just... from the wild that they're dealing with. Oh, man. You know what – you know what else I could see happening? No. Um, since we already have the demons hunting for them, uh, I could kind of see the demons stumbling onto the children in the middle of that attack and then being forced to go fight this giant wilderness that, murder monster oh, because they, they want to protect, the, protect their produce and that's how the children and get away. And that's how the children make a getaway from it. Because yeah, the, yeah, the demons have to like protect the children from the other monsters. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Like, either that or the, the demon or the thing falling in, like, feels like the most acceptable forms of, like, um, you know, where this should go or where it could go. And it feels, like, natural with everything that's been set up so far versus, like, you know, an ass pull. <laughs> it's yeah. so funny. It's like, we have this, like, I have this, like, unspoken gambling game where it's like, you know, oh, man, I love the series, but, like, oh, uh, oh how's you know, it going to uh, fail? 
Yeah, how's it gonna fail? Oh, one in four chance. <laughs> you know, here are all the terrible story options that I can see it going down. One in four chance this week. We're gonna see if it goes on. Up, oh, uh, it made it. We're, we're like on like a really like high high winning streak right now with this we're, series. Yeah, we've been like rolling sixes, rolling twenties, whatever analogy you want to use for your gambling or dice. Yeah, it, it, it's been consistently consistent uh, and strong and. Um, it's kind of funny though. Like, um, I feel like there'd be more hype for this, but I feel like it's been sucked away by the Attack on Titan uh, season run, as well as uh, I don't know, other things in the anime community. But um, was... well, all really needs to like catapult it to the stratosphere is like one good season, and you, you could probably like get a good twelve episode season out of like just that first arc of them getting out. Yeah, I could I... see that. They haven't, they haven't done a, they haven't done an anime yet, have they? No, no. It, 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 like generally, the rule of thumb that I've seen, like in mm-hmm. Shonen Jump, um, is that like usually it has to have been serialized for more than a year. And what's really interesting though is that like we're seeing less of like you know the bulk adaptations where it's just like you know we're gonna keep on making this until it's dead and we run out of manga material. Uh, it feels like studios are getting a little bit more cautious when they're doing like you know smaller seasons as opposed to like something nar- like Naruto or Bleach where like. One studio, like Studio Parat or Tohi Animation, just like keeps on making it till it ends or de- you know death or cancellation. Until or... death do they part. Or yeah, until death I, do they I part. To, I have to say, I am kind of a fan of fewer filler arcs because sweet Same. Jesus, some of those are dumb. Oh God, they're dumb. Although actually, that reminds me, since you're going through uh, what's it called One Piece with Katie, yeah. um, there's this really interesting website I found called One mm-hmm. Piece. Where basically what they do is they do like a Dragon Ball Z Kai with One Piece, and they like basically Ooh. cut out anything that's not in the manga, anything that's not in the manga, to like try and you know create a more manga style pacing. Oh, I'll I'll send you the link a- after this. Yeah, it's, that'd uh, be interesting. Uh, yeah, um, because, because we we, we got piece. to the Alabasta um, filler piece where it, there was that, that fucking sand ship and the people with umbrellas on their heads. And we were just so done with it. It was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Okay, just just look it up on the Wikipedia page, or the um, One Piece wiki. Okay, we're going to skip this many episodes, because this is stupid as fuck. (laughs) So I'm really, so I guess I'm really, I would be really happy if um, Promised Neverland really avoided that, if it ever got serialized they just have seasons as opposed to like oh no what are the children going to do they have to help these magical glowing lizards (laughs) who (laughs) track these bugs that they need to cure this one small child that's been with them the entire time that never heard more than two words out of because he's sick because he was stung by this magical rose and also the demons are lost that sounds like really classic filler right there. For three fucking months. <laughs> as sad as that is, that sounds like actually a filler arc storyline that they would do. If God, filler is the worst, it's like fucking expensive fan fiction. That oh, it's always like hand strung by like terrible guidelines of you, you know not to like break the universe, but you, you know you can't do any, you, you pretty much can't do anything interesting. Oh god, it's not even fan fiction. It's it, it's 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 story by committee, and that's terrible. I think the most interesting <laughs> story by committee. <laughs> I don't know. I, like I always found the One Piece fillers a little bit more tolerable just because like one piece is a little bit more um licensed to be goofier than some of the other yeah. series but i mean it, it, it's still like inconsequential and terrible and boring and you know i think the dumb. best thing they've done with it so far has been the davy back arc it was yeah. the thing felt the least like filler <laughs> i agree with that well, Davy back arc was like such a like a little fun little you know let's just be goofy and have fun with it <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, you know what else I could see as a terrible fucking filler? What, what, what will hopefully it? never happen is an entire filler arc of them reading the goddamn books to the children. <laughs> <laughs> Something completely inconsequential that will never happen and will never be brought up ever again. And an entire arc of that jackass in the goddamn goggles and scarf. <laughs> like going on magical adventures while the ch- children sit around the fire. And like eat soup or something. 
and, and all you want to do is really just bash your face in against the wall because you don't care and you understand that this will never come up, nor will any of the adventures actually play into the story. Yeah. I, that that's probably the most like logical filler. <laughs> I could see like Scott, like you know, you're just banging your head I, in frustration. I, I I I hope I really hope studios will never ever turn to filler like that ever again. Like I I want to see the evolution beyond filters. I fillers. I think like studios. I think some a lot of studios have learned from like the lessons of Naruto and Bleach. Like. Filler can be really detrimental to the fucking series. Really, 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 really detrimental. Yeah. Like I like these I like these shorter like um episodes. Self-contained, self-contained seasons. Yeah. Yes. And that they're just like time frame. Yeah, that's why I feel like, you know, uh, uh someday, who knows, it'll take a Herculean effort. I don't want to drag Scott onto the My Hero Academia hype train. But um It's like you know. a it like hits a certain sweet spot. I think they're gonna hit a certain sweet spot, I think. Uh Maybe one day with the animation. Well, like, well, yeah. Or yeah. eventually, you know, there'll be like twelve or twenty-six episode seasons. See how well it does, and you know, if there's more material, keep on adapting it to the end. Oh, probably like the best long-running shonen um, uh, adaptation was probably the Hunter Hunter, though. In terms of like, you know, it was 114 episodes. It was one every week for like three, four years, and the quality was like really, really consistent from one episode to the next, and there was no filler whatsoever. Oh, mm. that's impressive. Yeah, it, it was uh, completely 100% based on the manga. It was a really good adaptation. It had a consistent quality across all of it. And, uh, yeah, it was a really, really good example of, um, I guess, doing it right. Just, uh, you know, um, taking the material and not stretching it longer than it needs to be. I think it helped, though, that they had, like, enough material to just, like, run through it without any uh, gaps. And, you know, they had a decent enough ending point to, uh, you know, kind of not give everything a truly satisfying conclusion but like the best ending you could probably ask for yeah even though the series isn't over and it's you know continuing the incredible battle of hiatus x hiatus which i hear uh there's gonna be hunter hunter coming out soon and we we gotta review that shit when that comes out we're we're definitely doing the hunter hunter reviews when that hits again um, although it's funny, Scott, though, um, if you go online, there's like this infamous chart now where they basically have the entire publication cycle of Hunter Hunter <laughs> from like 2007 and they have like all the weeks of the year marked and then there's red weeks and then there's uh, blue weeks in terms of its publication schedule. <laughs> <laughs> because Togashi kills himself and apparently from what I've read, he doesn't like use any assistance, which is why it's so... Um, which is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, the art is so laborious for him is the fact that he does it all himself and he refuses to have assistance because he wants to have, you know, complete control, even if it's kind of scraggy or shitty at <laughs> times. Jeez. And, you know, so he just does it and he gets himself to near death and then he stops and he's their golden boy. So he, he gets that <laughs> privilege. I damn it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes you wonder, though, like, wouldn't it work so much better if he just, like, let someone else do the art? <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, but the interesting thing about uh, Promise Neverland, though, it's like an artist-writer duo. It's not one person. And actually, like, if you look up the artist, Ponzu something or another, uh, I'm butchering the name, but but he has a lot of interesting artwork, um, art books out and about, and a lot of interesting cool shit. So, I think we've had a fun discussion, a lot of digressions, a lot of analysis, excited about the William Minerva pen. I, I'm so happy that, like, you know, the, the coordinate thing was basically confirmed, although that seemed pretty obvious. 8 out of pen- 10 episode for me. 10 out of 10 or, for you, Greg? Uh, 8 out of 10, uh... 8 out of 10? Yeah, yeah. For this chapter. 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I was Does entertained, but... The the goggle the the William Minerva design for the, the non goggles didn't uh, boost up the score. No, no, I just really want to see a child be mauled. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Ray threatening to self immolate himself enough for you, Scott? See, see, that would have been a ten out of ten. <laughs> like if one of the children and left himself behind, doused himself with gasoline, and lit himself on fire. And threw himself at the monster as like a snack. (laughs) 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 We'll we'll see if it ever goes that dark. Although, 
don't know. Have you ever seen a? I told this Greg about this. Have you ever heard of a Kame Ga Kill? No. It, it's not a good series. It's a terrible manga, uh, terrible anime. Um, but it's an example of like a a seinen series in shonen clothing or a shonen clothing trying to like pretend it's like big and grown up because it's like. Oh my god, it's oh. super edgy. The the government's corrupt, and we're these like assassins, and we're gonna go kill uh, the evil government. Oh, I heard this is shit. This, yeah, this it, whole it, series okay. of shit. It, 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 it it's not good. <laughs> it really is not good. Um, and that's like an example of like um, you know, something you know, very try hard. The one good thing I'd say about it though is that like I like the fact that like. You know, it fulfills its promise in saying, like, ah, when these characters fight with their superpowers, one of them will die. And it actually follows through with that. Every time someone fights in a superpowered battle, someone dies. Whether it's Hooray! a good guy or a hero. You know, that goes a that long says a lot of That says that a lot goes... coming from a shonen series, right? <laughs> well, remember, it's seen in, but oh. it basically is the ethics of a shonen series. Oh, okay. um, God. All right. But, um, you know, like, that's an example of, like, forced grit and grime that, like, I don't know. It would be fun to see a kid get killed, but it, it, I, I guess it, it has to be in the right circumstances. It has to be earned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like I, I would hate to see this like go into like grim darkness. Because like the tone is like so perfect between fanciful and uh, you know kind of menacing and mean. All and not... right, I'll give it a seven point five. I mean, mostly this is just set up, which <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm really happy when it happens, and the payoff is always good. But it, it's a setup chapter. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, maybe I'm just like giving it a higher score because I like that monster at the end. <laughs> God damn. <it. laughs> and like, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. These like kids like don't have analytical problems. Where like the biggest thing is like, oh my god, here's this woman. Uh, we got to figure out how to get up this fucking wall. No, it's a fucking rampaging murder muscle monster that is going to tear you <laughs> apart, and you've got to do something smart. Oh my god. You know what they, they might happen? They might do their like game of tag. Okay. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. thinking of that actually. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, like they I, cover I, their tracks and they like maybe climb up a tree, con- trees and scatter oh, I do or have some one shit. One important question: How did no one hear that thing moving around? <laughs> well, Emma and Ray did for like two seconds until it burst yeah, through. Two but... seconds. I feel like that's like the equivalent of the fucking. Uh, um, Terminator movie where that giant goddamn robot s- somehow snuck up <laughs> on the house and tore the goddamn roof off and shit. It's like, how did you not hear that? I, mean, I can hear a bus go by. Did, did anyone not hear the giant murder robot? Anyone? Anyone at all? Oh, God. Terminator Salvation, right? I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. You, you actually got around to seeing that? Oh, God. Uh that was years ago when I was living with my parents. They rented it, and I was just angry with them the entire time. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> Terminator Salvation is a pretty fucking shitty movie. And, and yeah, I remember that scene where they like the, it's actually not a terrible robot design, but then it just like rips it off. It's like I'm here, bitches. I'm here to take humans. Like, why, why? Why are you here? I, there was no like ground rumbling or anything. It's just like out of nowhere. Like fuck you. That, that yeah. was completely. So yeah, I, I'm I'm a little confused about why why no one heard the giant murder um, machine sneaking up on them, and that, that that thing did not look like it was being quiet. Well, <laughs> like, a better... it looked like it had a good old head of steam behind it. Maybe better... maybe they'll explain in the next chapter. That's maybe better. there'll be a, actually a good explanation. Maybe it was a tree that, uh, you know, it was disguised as a tree and it just burst out of the tree or something like well, that. One bullshit uh, excuse if they don't want them is like maybe the tree like um, shot a pheromone and it gave them their worst fear and they're all hallucinating right now. Oh god, mm, I hope not. Yeah, that would be kind. I of don't something. know about that. Uh, let, let's just like accept it as it is now. You know, it's a manga panel. All right, all right. You can't, right, can't I'll really do it. like the the T Rex. Oh my god, what's that rumbling? As effectively versus like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, a piece of splash page. I, I will, I will tolerate it for the moment. <laughs> but yeah, all right, seven point five out of ten. I'll go with uh, that. All right, but cool. Anything else about this chapter? I feel like we've milked a lot from this. I think we've milked a <laughs> lot of content. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. So hold on a anyone, sec. Anyone watching this video? Thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed our fun banter and uh, you know camaraderie. 
Uh, we'll be here next week as we roll the dice to see if, like, the bad <laughs> bad storytelling. <laughs> we, we roll roll the anime dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, roll the manga dice to see if any of the bad storytelling we're afraid of, like. I'm trying to do a thing. I don't care where I'm trying to talk to. Oh, well, this is probably a signal then. Yeah, this is a good point to uh, head off. Uh, all right, so thank you for watching this video. Uh, thanks for being with us, Scott, and um, we will um, see you next week. All right, Maybe. see you then. Sorry. That's all right. We're waving. All right. We're waving. Bye. All Bye. right.